Learn English with a fra. Job interview. Good morning. Excuse me. I would like to see the human resources manager, please. Good morning, ma'am. Of course. But why do you exactly want to see the manager? Oh, I have an interview with him today. They called me yesterday and told me to come. Okay, ma'am. Can you please tell me your name and last name? It is required. Sure. My name is Lisa Smith. I come for the new job opening you have for a supervisor. I see. Can you please wait for a moment while I tell the manager you're here? Sure, I'm going to take a seat in the reception. You just let me know, please. Okay, here we are. Relax, Saul. You're going to get it. You are the best. I'm starting to feel nervous. I think I'll drink a cup of coffee so I can relax a little. This is much better now. I am so prepared for this interview. I have been preparing myself to answer all the questions correctly. Come on, you can do it. Lisa Smith. Yes, here I am. I am Lisa Smith. Will the manager interview me right now? Yes, ma'am. The human resources manager is in his office. You can go in. Thank you very much. Good morning, Lisa. Right? How do you feel today, Lisa Smith? Oh, I'm fine. It's a pleasure to meet you. It has been a great morning for me. That's good. So you came here for the job opening. We have four. For the new supervisor, your secretary called me yesterday to tell me I was selected for this interview. Oh, right. So, have you worked as a supervisor before, or it is your first time? I have been working in the same area for years, and I think I'm ready to move forward. Great. Although. We don't usually hire people with zero experience in the area. Oh no, I do have a lot of experience in the area, but not as a supervisor. I see. Don't worry, Lisa. Why don't you tell me a little about yourself? About myself? Sure. Where to start? Well, you already know my name and surname. I haven't always lived in the city. I moved from California some years ago to study here. I came to this city just for that reason to study a career. I studied business management. I graduated with honors, being the first place of my class. We were hundred people. So I considered that as an important achievement since I was not very smart in the school. That's excellent. Congratulations. And why did you decide to study that career? Well, my father was a businessman too, and the general manager of an important company. Of course, it was many years ago. Because now he's retired, he is seventy years old now. Anyway, I used to see him talking about business, how to manage a company, and I like that. And that's why I decided to study this amazing career. I think I can do a great job as a supervisor. Okay. So, what do you think is necessary for this job position, Lisa Smith? Since you need to manage people, you need to have leadership first, and I think I have it. You think you have it? Why do you say that? 
Can you give me an example of your leadership? I grew up in California, and it's truth I wasn't the best student at the school, at least not at maths or science. But I was chosen as the high school president for three years in a row. That was amazing. As a president, I could help the students to get some improvements for the school, of course. And why were you chosen? As the high school president, if you were not that intelligent, I was popular, and many people knew about my abilities to manage difficult situations. I see. Now I would like to know about your family. Tell me about it, please. I have two brothers and one sister. They all live in California with my parents in a big house. I was the only member of the family who decided to move from his hometown. I really wanted to become a professional, and that's why I worked to pay for the career. I think that's impressive. Now. What are your greatest strengths and weaknesses? Well, I consider myself as a responsible and committed person. That's one of my strengths. I can take full responsibility for my team's performance, being this good or bad. I'm also committed to my career, so if I need to stay extra hours to complete, I don't know a project, then I won't hesitate to do. And about my weakness, I can be stubborn sometimes. I could say that his conviction, but it is not good to believe something can go just one way. Of course, I'm working on that. I think it is normal to confuse passion with obstinacy. You're right. Sometimes, when we do things with passion, we can do it wrongly. I have five years working in the business management area, and I could learn those things. I see. And are you able to work under pressure? That's usual here. Sure, I am. In my one years working in this area, I always worked under pressure. That is something very usual in this job. We have to deal with different situations every day. I'm able to work under pressure and also to lead a large group of people to get the objectives. That's true. Now, what is the biggest challenge? You have ever faced in your life. I am the kind of person who likes challenges. Since I was a child, I faced a lot of them. But I think the biggest one was the decision to move to another city. It was hard to do. I had to deal with debts, finding a place to live, getting a work to pay for my stuff. It was definitely a difficult moment in my life, but happily, I could handle it successfully. It really is. Okay, Lisa Smith. I don't usually hire unexperienced workers, but this time I'm going to make an exception. I think you have the necessary for this job, and of course you can learn easily. How to manage people in this company? You know this is an important company in the city, and we need people who can't represent us well. So I think you passed this interview, and you are now able to come tomorrow to talk to the general manager because you need to meet him, and he's going to explain you more about this company. Oh, that's wonderful! Thank you very much. I promise I will do my best for this company. It was nice to meet you, Lisa. Welcome to A and B Enterprise. 
I will see you tomorrow morning. It was my pleasure. I will be here tomorrow early. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Yes, yes. I got it. Yes, I knew I could. Yes. Tips to speak in English. Good morning, teacher. Can you borrow me your dictionary, please? I needed to do my homework. Morning, Lisa. Are you sure you said that question correctly? Think about it. Yeah. I mean, I always said when I want someone to lend me something. Okay, but the correct way could be, can you lend me your dictionary, please? Some people use borrow when they actually mean loan or lend. For example, can you borrow me an eraser? When what they mean to say is, can you lend me an eraser? Okay, I understand. But what is the difference? I don't get it. In standard English, to borrow means to take something from someone, knowing that you will give it back. To lend or to loan means to pass something on to someone else for a short time. Okay, now I get it. Then, can I borrow your dictionary to do my homework, teacher? Very good. And no, I can't. I don't have a dictionary right now. Sorry. You don't have one? Me too. I have been looking for a dictionary the whole morning. Me too? I suppose you wanted to say, me either. Am I right? No, me too. I mean, me too I don't have a dictionary. That's what I told you. The difference between me too and me either is that one is positive and the other one is negative. The positive one is me too. So for example, if you say I like traveling then I will say me too. Which means I like traveling too. On the other hand, if you say I don't like extreme sports, then, if I agree with you, I would say me either which means I don't like extreme sports either, not too, either. If you want to agree with a negative statement, you should say me either instead. Do you get it? Okay, now I understand. I've been saying that wrong since five years, ha ha ha. No, it's not since two years. That's not correct. Since is used with a specific point of time in the past. That's a very common mistake students make. And for is only used with a period of time, like the number of years. So the correct way could be. I've been saying that wrong for two years, or the other way. I have been saying it wrong since I started learning English, or you can say the year you started. Okay, that makes sense. I didn't understood that before. Thank you very much for your help, teacher. I didn't understood or I didn't understand? Which one is correct? Can you tell me? Okay, did I say it wrong? I didn't knew I was wrong, teacher. I'm sorry about that. You're doing it again. You said I didn't knew, which is not correct, and I'll tell you why. That is also a common mistake students make. We cannot use the past tense twice like this. We've already made do and did which is the past tense, if you already changed the helping verb. Into the past tense, 
You don't need to also use the past tense of your main verb. So, it's I didn't go to the party and no I didn't went to the party. Because didn't it's already in the past tense. You're right, teacher. I'm learning English. There's many mistakes I usually make when I speak. Another mistake. But don't worry, there are a lot of people, especially native speakers, who use there is when we're talking about a plural subject. For example, there is many ways to study English. That's actually an incorrect sentence. The reason many native speakers end up using there is instead of there are is simply because it's easier to say. Try it. There's there are very which feels more comfortable when you're pronouncing it. There is or there are. Too many R sounds in a row are hard to pronounce, even for native speakers. But the correct way is, there are many mistakes and there is one mistake. Remember that. Thank you, teacher. I didn't meet nobody better than you at teaching English. You are a good teacher. Wait. It's very common for non-native English speakers to say I didn't meet nobody which is incorrect. People say I didn't meet nobody but the word nobody would be wrong in this sentence. The correct version is I didn't meet anybody. Do you know why? I will tell you. Because nobody isn't used in a sentence that already has not in it a sentence that is already negative. If there is already a negative component in a sentence, you do not add another negative to it. You'd say I didn't meet anybody. And no I didn't meet nobody. I understand. You know what? The life could be more beautiful without mistakes. This is an old one, but it's still a tricky one. I mean the use of the or general statement. Many advanced learners still use the definite article when talking about a plural or uncountable noun. Remember that in English, when we're talking in general about all of a thing we don't use the. For example, the sentence life is beautiful is correct, but the life is beautiful it's not correct. That doesn't mean we can't use the but when we do, we're being specific and only referring to one thing. For example I'm reading about the life of Adam Smith. That's the difference. You're right, teacher. My friend he told me I was making a lot of mistakes, but I didn't believe he. Two mistakes. Another common mistake is repeating the subject in a sentence when you really don't need to. My friend she is coming with me. We don't need to say she. We can just say, my friend is coming with me. If we talk about her again. Then we could say she because we know who we're talking about. In your previous sentence would be, my friend told me or he told me, but not both of them. And the other mistake is, I didn't believe he which is not correct. The right way it would be. I didn't believe him. Notice that I used him and not he, you see? Because him is the pronoun, we need to use in the object of a sentence. In the same way, you need to use him in the object, and he in the subject that is the correct way. Fantastic! I'm learning a lot, teacher. Thanks for correcting my mistakes. It's my pleasure. 
But now you need to go to classes. It's very late, Lisa. Okay, I know. But can we do this again? Please? I'm sure I'm making many more mistakes. Of course. If you are making a mistake like me, and want to improve their English skills then. English conversation practice. Lisa, how are you doing? Why do you look so sad? I took a placement exam. You know I studied English many years ago. So, I wanted to. Yeah, I get it. You wanted to go to advanced level, right? What happened? I failed. I don't remember anything. I thought I had advanced English level. Now I realize I don't I got a basic English level. I didn't expect that. That's okay. It's normal. You haven't practiced English in a long time. But why don't you study in an English institute? Or maybe you can pay for those online courses. I can't do that. I don't have enough money to pay for those kind of courses. Hey, wait. You speak advanced or native English. I have heard you. And you've never studied in an English institute or it's something like that. You studied by your own. I need your help, please. How did you do it? How can I learn English by myself? How did I learn English by myself? Well, I had to do many things. It was not easy, but if you really want to know, I'm gonna tell you. Are you sure? Of course. I will do whatever it takes to learn English and to speak advanced English. All right, then. First you have to set goals to learn English by yourself. To learn English without a teacher, you will need to be realistic about your studying. The good thing is that you have already taken a placement exam, so you know your English level. Now decide how long you will study English every day. One hour is good, but if you can do more, that's even better. Next, write down your English learning goals. This makes your goals real. Also, writing them down means that you can always look at them again. That really works. You will also want to make many small goals instead of one big goal. Big goals can be intimidating or scary. That's a big problem most of the students have. They just want to learn English. That's it. They say, I'm going to speak advanced English level. But that's obvious. It doesn't work. You need to be more specific with that. I'm going to give you an example. Instead of saying, I will improve my grammar. You can say, tomorrow I will master present simple. The day after tomorrow, I will master present progressive and so on. What I did was, I made a calendar just to learn English. With specific goals and duties. Schedule a time for that. Don't just say, this week, I'm going to study English. That doesn't work. You need to set the day and the time you will study and practice your English. That's important. 
And with that comes an English study plan. Don't just choose a topic by your own. Setting a day and time to practice is good, but you can't just say, on Sunday at 8 p.m., I'll study English. Or you can't study third conditional today and tomorrow the verb be. Or maybe you can, okay. But you need to make a plan. Maybe mastering third conditional is more important for you. Or maybe you already know verb B and it's not necessary to study that again. You don't need to make it look like a college course outline. It's not necessary. However, your study plan should have some details about what you will learn and how you will study it. Oh, also make sure your study plan has different types of activities. Listening, writing, etc. Unless, again, that you only want to improve your speaking skills. It all depends on you. But having a variety of activities will keep your English status interesting and fun. You can play vocabulary games, watch YouTube videos, talk to native speakers, and more. Whatever works best for you, remember, a study plan should help you complete your goals. Another good way of learning English by yourself is to use English immersion. To successfully learn English by yourself, you should include English in your life as much as possible. The best way to do this is immersion. And maybe you're asking, what the hell is this? Immersion language learning means surrounding yourself with the language you want to learn. So put English all around you. There are many ways to do English immersion at home. Level things with their English names. Write the names of objects, furniture, or rooms, and post-it notes. You can use a computer program to learn English and work through the program at your own speed. Do daily tasks in English. You can watch or read the news in English. Or talk about what you need to do around the house. You can write a daily journal in English that really works. Believe me. And much more. Or if you can, you can talk to native English speakers. That worked well for me. You can make some English speaking friends. I have to emphasize here that you need to be careful. You know that we can find different things now when we go online, so just be careful, please. Make friends and then schedule a time to talk with them every week. It's fun and educational. Oh, and about that thing. I told you before about reading books, watching movies. Maybe you're thinking, how am I going to do this if my English level is basic? You don't have to go with advanced things. Start with children's books, movies, and TV shows. Children's books, movies, and TV shows cover these basic topics. They are also easy to understand. Use materials made for children as well as your other learning materials. You will understand more and increase your confidence at the same time. Something that really worked for me was to listen to anything and everything. 
Remember, you learned your first language by doing a lot of listening at the beginning. Listening helps you pick up or get words from the people you hear. You can do the same with English. At first, you may only understand a little. But the more you listen, the more vocabulary you will acquire. Next, you will be able to make phrases. Eventually, you will be able to form full sentences. So, listen to English whenever you have the chance. Play English songs and the background. Listen to English learning podcast. Watch TV or movies, or listen to people speaking English on the street. The last thing I will recommend you is watch YouTube, TV shows, and movies. Children's materials can be easy and fun, but you might still want something more interesting. Do you like cooking? Exercise? Science? Look for English videos about your favorite topics on YouTube. Tips to improve your relationship, how to do something, real-life situations, whatever you like. There are also many YouTube channels for English learners. If you find one you like. If you find one you like, it's almost like having a teacher. And for free. That's the best part. You can also watch English TV shows. TV shows are a great way to learn real-life language. Amazing! That's not easy to do, but now I know why you've learned English so fast. I promise I will do everything you said really want to improve my English. Improve English speaking skills every day. As I was telling you, Lisa, I got an email from your mother. She says she's okay in Italy. Yeah. Okay, Dad. You know what? I have to go now. Take care. Wait. Why are you in a hurry? Come here and sit down. Let's talk for a while. No, I can't. I have a lot of things to do, Dad. I have to go now. A lot of things to do? Yeah, I get it. But you haven't visited me in months. Why don't you stay for a moment, and maybe then we can drink some beer. What do you say? Dad, I'm telling you. I can't stay. I have to go to the bank and after that to the mall. To the bank? Don't tell me you asked for another loan. Don't tell me, Lisa. Yes, of course. I had to do it because we had no money to pay for Simona's college. And after that, I had to go to the mall to buy some books for Michelle. That's why I can't stay. I understand. But you don't look good. You look very worried stressed. I am worried and stressed, Dad. I have a lot of things to do. I told you that. Okay, relax. Take a little break and let's talk about your problems, okay? Don't you understand? I can't. I have to go to the bank and then to the... Yeah, I heard you. To the bank and then to the mall. But we need to talk, so that's what we'll do. Fine. What do you want to talk about? About mom? No, I want you to tell me about your problems. You're always running. What's happening? 
I don't know. I have to work harder now that Simona is going to study at the college. Alex, my husband also works full day and then we both arrive home very late and very tired. I'm so tired. I sleep only three hours a day. I feel tired and sleepy all the time. I got a second job. The payment is not bad, but it's very stressful. I finish work at night. Because I start work at 7 in the morning and then I have to leave at 4 in the afternoon. Run to my other job and then I finish work at 11 p.m. I arrived home at midnight. Then I have to wake up at 3 or 4 in the morning because I need to check some emails. You know we started our own business last year. We don't have many customers yet, but... We have to make calls, send and reply emails to get new clients. I'm so tired. Alex works part-time at the pharmacy and then the rest of the time he works in the company. But he also ends up very tired. And I understand. It's not easy to be checking emails every day. All day. Make calls all day too. But we have to keep working hard. Are you sure? I mean, are you sure you really have to work that hard, Lisa? Are you sure? I mean, are you sure you really have to work that hard, Lisa? What do you mean? Of course I have to do it. Life is not easy. And you know that. I know. But what I mean is, why do you work hard? Why do you both work hard? Why? I'm telling you. Simona will study at the university. Also, we bought a new car and we have to pay for the house we bought five years ago. All these things require a lot of money. That's why we need to work hard every day. I see. But why do you want to make a lot of money? That's the question. Don't you understand? I'm telling you. To pay for the new car, the house, and so on. Yes, you already told me that. But there is one thing I really don't understand, Lisa. You told me you work hard to get all these things to be happy. You have those things. But I don't see you happy. That's why I don't understand. You work hard to be happy. But you are not happy. Then why do you work hard every day? To be happy? Yeah, now. We have to work hard, but maybe in 10 or 20 years, we could save enough money to to travel around the world, to buy a bigger house or a better car, to be happy. In 10 or 20 years? Now you're 45. In 10 years you'll be 55. And in 20 years you'll be almost 60. You won't be young anymore. I know, Dad. Don't think I haven't thought about it before because I have. But what can I do? Should I quit my jobs and close my company? And then what? No, of course not. I'm not telling you to quit your job or the company. Don't do that. I'm just asking you to consider something. Is it worth to spend years working hard like this? 
to have more money and then start being happy in 10 or 20 years? Is that really worth it? I did the same 40 years ago. I was your age and I wanted everything. A new car, a beautiful house, travel around the world, wanted to have a lot of money. And you made it. You have a big house. You have a nice car and you have money. Yes, Lisa. But at what cost? I think I lost precious years of my life. I worked all day. I never had time to go out or to travel. 30 years working hard. And when I got the money, I was too old to enjoy that money. You see? What I mean is don't quit your job. Keep working hard. Work really hard. But don't wait till you have my age to start living your life and to be happy. Maybe you don't need to have two jobs. Maybe just one in your company. Maybe you don't need that luxury car or a bigger house. Maybe you need less to be happy. Don't sacrifice your happiness only to have money. Think about it. I think I understand. I get your point of view. Maybe you're right. I will think about it. That's great. And what about you? Did you understand the idea? Let me know. Job interview. Good morning, Lisa. It's a pleasure to meet you. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. I'm really excited about this job. That's great. Well, as you know, we're looking for a person with specific skills. Yes, I know. And I think I can fit very well for that job position. I am motivated. Okay, then I want you to tell me a little about yourself, Lisa. Sure. My name is Lisa and I was born in this city, so I know it very well. I studied in Universe Elementary School and then at Washington High School. I graduated from school in 2020 and then I started in St. Patrick College. I studied business management. I studied there for three years and then I graduated this year. It was awesome. I mean, the graduation party. Also the ceremony. All my family was there and also my friends. In fact, it was two months ago, that's why I have been looking for a job. I think that's all. I see you're very young. You're 22 years old, right? That's correct. I started college when I was 15 years old. That's why I'm a young professional. I see. And as I could see, you don't have any experience in any kind of job, right? Yes, ma'am, but I helped my father in his company. He's the owner of a big company. There, I checked some documents, but that was on the weekends because I started on weekdays. Yeah, I see. Well, that's not a problem for us since we're looking for young people to work with us. And we know that if you just graduated, you may not have much experience on the job. Here we can teach you everything you need to do a great job. Don't worry. Oh, that's great. So, when can I start? Next month? I need to know. 
Wait a minute. We haven't finished yet. I want you to tell me a little about your family. My family? Well, I live with my parents, my brother, and my two sisters. Michelle, my oldest sister, studies in New York, and Olivia, my other sister, is in London. About my brother, his name is Marco and he is studying at the school. He's seven years old. I was going to study in Germany, I mean in a German college, but I preferred to stay here. All my friends were here and I didn't want to be at the other side of the world. Of course not. Universities here are not bad, so I decided to stay here and study at a local university. My parents are divorced. I live with my father and his girlfriend. She is like my mother. My mom lives in the U.S., but we usually visit her on Christmas. They don't get along very well. But she's a good mother. She always takes us to the mall in New York to buy whatever we want. Anyway, my father is a great person. In fact, he recommended me to work in this company. I see. And what about your studies? How was the career and the subjects? I wasn't the best student in my class, but I could pass all the subjects successfully. Did you attend to any seminars, workshops, or trainings? About the career, of course. Yeah, sure I had to go to different seminars, but I really don't remember them. I see. Well, as I told you before, we're looking for a person who wants to learn. So, I think I will give you an opportunity to work in this company. If you want, of course. Really? Sure. Thank you so much. So, how much will I be earning, then? Well, since you're starting your working life, I can offer you the basic salary. Is that okay for you? The basic salary? No, that's not enough. I am a professional, so I will have to earn more. The basic salary is only to start your working life because we have to teach you everything first. After you learn this job, then we can offer you more money. It will depend on you. But you can't earn more money because you don't have any experience at this kind of job. Here in this company, you will have great opportunities to grow professionally. But for the moment, I can only offer you the basic salary. What do you say? I don't know. And what about the benefits? What benefits will I get with this job? Benefits? Well, you will be on the payroll, of course. With all the benefits. Double salary twice a year and 15 days of vacation health insurance and only 15 days i thought it was a month or two i need to travel out of the country well if you need to travel because of an emergency then that's okay we can talk about that but what is that emergency do you need to study a master out of the country no. I told you my mom is in New York and we have to go there for Christmas. For one month. Well, I'm really sorry, but that couldn't be since it's not an emergency. Well, and what will my working schedule be? I want to know. 
Oh, you will be working from 7 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. 8 hours. 8 hours? That's too much. When I worked with my father, I only worked 4 hours. We also have a part-time job, but we need a full-time person for this job right now. I don't like it. I need to have more free time to do what I really love to do. Life is not about working. We have to do what we really love to do. You don't understand. Well, that's our offer. If you don't like it, then that's okay. Don't worry. No. You're wrong. I'm a professional. I deserve better than this. Goodbye. Before you leave, let me tell you something. You need to start from the bottom. Especially if you don't have any experience at this kind of job. You have to work hard to earn it. Stop lecturing me. I know what I do. I will find a great job with a better salary. Bye. Wow. She's not the first young person who reacts like that. What is happening with young people? Do you know? What do you think about this situation? Let me know on the comments. How to improve your reading skills. Good morning, teacher. I want to talk to you, please. This is very important. Can we talk? Morning, Lisa. Of course. Tell me. What happened? Well, I couldn't do my homework because I didn't have time to read the book. I'm sorry. Didn't you have time to do the homework, or you didn't want to do it? Well, in fact, I read the book, but I couldn't understand anything. It's difficult. I see. But you need to do it. Remember reading a skill is also very important. Yeah, probably. But I can't do it. I don't like reading and when I try, I don't understand. Could you help me, teacher? How can I read in English? How can I understand when I read? Don't worry. I'm gonna help you with that. I will tell you how to improve your reading skills. Seriously? Thank you so much, teacher. I promise I will listen to you. Reading comprehension, or your ability to understand what you read, is a key skill that should be trained. Why? To make sure that you understand the words on the pages whenever you read an English book. While reading more is one way to work on your comprehension, there are tips and methods you can implement. To make your reading more effective, for example, make special time to read. This means making a special time for reading, without the risk or being interrupted. You should try to spend at least some minutes every day, on focused reading. It will depend on your routine. Do this, find a quiet comfortable spot with bright lighting to sit. It can be your bedroom. Get everything you might need ready before you sit down, such as pen, notebook and something to drink. What I always do, for example, is, I bring a bottle of water whenever I start reading. Or a snack. That way. I don't have to worry about going to the kitchen to bring something. Decide how long you will read. This is very important. 
You can't just start reading till you get bored. I mean, you can, but it's better to decide how many minutes or hours you will be reading. This will help you organize your time better. I know you have to work, so I start a routine will help you a lot. Put all your electronics on silent mode or turn them off, and put them away. It includes your cell phone. Now you're wondering. But teacher, why do I need to do all these things just to start reading? Isn't it better just to open a book and start reading? Well, maybe that's why you don't understand when you read. If you're reading your own language, maybe that can work, but remember you're learning a new language. So, if you have a specific process for reading practice, then your brain will know when. You're about to work on your comprehension. As a result, you'll be more focused before you even start. That's something many students don't understand. At least, give it a try, please. What else? Oh, use a good dictionary. Also very important. If you're a beginner learner, choose an English dictionary that translates the words into your native language. There are also learner's dictionaries, which explain words using simple terms. Of course you can also use the Google Translator. For more advanced learners, I recommend using a monolingual dictionary. One that has definitions only in English with no translations. These dictionaries force you to think in English rather than relying on your native language. Now, just because you find a good dictionary doesn't mean you should look up every single new word. Use context clues. Using context clues means trying to understand a new word by looking at what's around it. For example, if you're stuck on a word you don't know, try looking at the whole sentence for a hint about what it means. Do you understand? Don't stop to look up every new word. It's harder to focus on your reading if you keep interrupting it. You can write down the word and look it up later. Only look up a word if without it. You can't understand what you're reading. It will help you improve your reading skills a lot. Now, when you're choosing books to read keep two things in mind. First, what you're interested in and second, your reading level. Don't forget this. Whenever you can, you should read things that you enjoy. You should also choose books. That is at an English level just above the one you're most comfortable with. Why? You want to challenge yourself enough to learn new things, but not so much that you're frustrated with your reading. To get a general idea of your reading level, Beginners should read dialogues, short reading about common topics or children's books. Intermediate learners can read longer texts, news articles and popular novels with simpler language. Advanced learners can read almost anything, but should approach some classic literatures such as Shakespeare's plays with caution. Now you will tell me but teacher, I don't have money to buy books, articles and these things. My friend, you don't need to buy anything. There are a lot of resources on internet. Just search them. Now, something that worked for me very well, 
because we don't have a lot of time now. It is not necessary to always read a book. I mean reading is everywhere we are. When you're on the bus, you can read the tickets or this advertising panels. There are a lot of them outside. And many of them are in English. Or you can read the instructions for use of the shampoo. They usually put them in different languages. Or you can go online and read news in English. Of course, about something you are interested in. Sports, movies, world. Do both intensive and extensive reading. Intensive reading is when you try to understand every word on the page. And extensive reading, simply means casually reading anything you see in English. Do both of them and I'm sure you will improve your English reading skills. Thank you, teacher. You have helped me a lot. Now, about writing, I want to improve it. Hey, wait. I have more tips about how to improve your reading skills. But writing is also very important. Well, it will rely on our subscribers. They will decide it. The next video would be more tips to read in English, or how to improve your writing skills. Let me know in the comments. And if you like the video, don't forget to like it. This conversation if you could improve your English a little more, please subscribe to the channel and share this video with a friend. Thank you very much for your support. Take care.